This doesn't make me feel good. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 41st episode of the show Power Rangers Zeo, as well as the 196th episode overall titled Where in the World is Zeo Ranger 5? We begin this episode on the lake where Tommy is driving a jet ski around the water, and I guess this is like supposed to be cool. This goes on for what feels like a solid four minutes. I mean, seriously. Kat, Emily, and Jason are watching this and they talk about how great he is. Kat can't look because she's afraid of something going wrong, to which I say, what? We've seen Tommy swim just fine. I mean, he's gonna be okay. Then Tommy's Uncle John comes up and he says that it's his jet ski. Also, Jason calls him Mr. Rush, so I guess this is Tommy's mom's brother. He says to let him know when Tommy's done being a show off leaving. Emily gets back to work while Jason and Kat go to check out Tommy, who is going toward the other side of the lake. Nearby, Sprocket and Gasket are walking around together, and Gasket says that this place is perfect for their new place of ruling. Gasket then says how he's better than Sprocket because he'll actually kill the Power Rangers. Then he zaps Tommy, kidnapping him. Jason and Kat see this, getting on their own jet ski to go out to Tommy's. They find no sign of him, and Kat says that she knows the Machine Empire had something to do with this. Well, duh, he literally got evaporated. Gasket then boasts to Sprocket how Machina is going to love him more for doing this. Meanwhile, at the power chamber, Alpha talks about how Billy isn't there because he's in Triforia helping Trey come back together. Anyways, Jason and Kat talk about how this doesn't really make any sense to them. Kat says that they should call Zordon and tell him. Alpha begins a global scan for Tommy. Then Uncle John comes up and Jason and Kat tell him that Tommy went to go get a part because Tommy thought he heard something funny with the engine. Great bluff, guys. Their communicators then go off and Zordon says that Tommy is no longer on Earth. They leave to the power chamber. Meanwhile, Bulk and Skuller are supposed to be washing Stone's jet ski, but Bulk wants to ride it. Anyways, Rito and Goldar are trying to repair the RV on the moon, and Rita says that they have to make the RV go super fast so they can zip through machine sensors so they can get back home. Rito then just starts punching the RV. Alpha says that they can't find Tommy and his communicator isn't working either. He says that if any particles are remaining, then they have to use this device to collect them to figure out where Tommy is at. Kat and Jason take it, teleporting back to the beach. Gasket and Sprocket see this, and Gasket sends Cogs to stop them from figuring anything out. Cogs surround Jason and Cat. It's morphin' time! Jason and Cat fight off the Cogs, and of course, Cat sucks at fighting. Then a Cog kicks the scanner out of her hand, splitting it into pieces as it goes through the air. Then Jason saves her because God forbid this character save herself for once in her godforsaken life. And then a Cog sticks its tongue out at them? What the hell was that? The Cogs leave, and they realize that the scanner is ruined. Gasket tells Sprocket how simple this is for him. Then we see Bulk and Skull on the jet ski and they can't start the thing and yeah, the engine just won't turn over. Gasket sees this and he says that this is perfect for him to use against the Rangers. Meanwhile, Bulk and Skull are just floating around the water with the jet ski and Bulk agrees that they should just take it back and if they don't, something bad will probably happen to it. Then of course, it gets turned into a monster. They run away. In the power chamber, we see that the monster is spraying water at people. How's that villainous? Jason tells Alpha to get the other Rangers to the lake. Back to action. All the remaining rangers show up and they say that the people are just stunned. From what, water? This monster is called Cruel Chrome, and he starts firing water at them and the rangers say that everything is spinning and they fall down onto the ground while Cruel Chrome laughs at how much this fight sucks. Gasket and Sprocket see this and they talk about how easy this is and Sprocket warns that just because they look down doesn't mean that they're out yet. Then Cruel Chrome starts to come toward them and Adam stops Cat from actually doing anything, saying that they have to regroup. The rangers teleport out. This episode's super boring. Willow and Rito are done doing whatever they were doing to the RV, but then Rito tries to add one more little adjustment, causing sparks. Smoke starts to pour into the RV, and Rita and Zed see that the RV is moving without anyone behind the wheel. They then toss the playing cards that they're playing with, and the RV is going in reverse in circles. Great use of our time, everyone. Everyone's at the power chamber, totally toking it up with Alpha's pure oxygen vaporizer to get rid of the toxins from Cool Chrome. Then Cool Chrome shows up again, and they back to action. Cruel Chrome tries to spray them again, but now it's not working because these rangers are baked out of their goddamn minds. Then we see a super slow motion fight against the monster. It's like they went out of their way to make this fight not interesting at all, or this episode interesting at all. Gasket calls out Clank and Orbis and they just make Cruel Chrome giant. The rangers tell Alpha they can't really do anything without Tommy, and Alpha says that he's created a remote system similar to the one that they had for the Ninja Falcon Zord. That's quite the callback. They're going to use it for Tommy's Super Zeo Zord. The rangers get into their zords and Jason says, I'll catch up because I guess he's not in this footage yet. The rangers individually fight Cruel Chrome a bit before Pyramidus just comes strolling in, firing at Cruel Chrome. Then the rangers unceremoniously form the Super Zeo Megazord, fighting the monster. Then Jason just makes Pyramidus stand up and they form that lame ass Ultra Zord that they have, firing at Cruel Chrome. 
Of course, Gasket is mad that he lost, and Sprocket makes fun of him for sucking. Gasket is even crying about this. This is weird. Jason and Kat walk up to find a jet ski, saying that Alpha replaced Stone's jet ski. For some reason. They then say they have the scanner again, so they're going to do that. Stone then comes up to Bulk and Skull, asking what they did with his jet ski because it's running so well. This causes them to faint because they definitely thought that they were about to get screamed at. In the power chamber, Jason and Kat are reading their data, and Alpha finds out that Tommy's in another dimension, somehow. They talk about how Tommy's brainwaves are being manipulated, and then sparks erupt around the console. They think that Tommy's being altered into someone else. Then we end this episode in probably the creepiest way possible. Tommy is morphed, struggling and breathing heavy while there's a device on his head, changing his brainwaves. The end. This episode had very little going for it. I mean, it just felt like only Austin St. John and Catherine Sutherland were even on set for this day at all. We only see Rocky, Adam, and Tanya once helmetless in the power chamber. I don't know if they're struggling with the scheduling of the actors right now or something, but whatever it is, it shows. I mean, Jason David Frank might as well not even be in this episode at all. However, this is definitely leading somewhere, and we'll begin the two-parter about Tommy next time. But until then, may the power protect you.